it, uh, it's an AI technique that has been taking off, taken off in the past uh, five, six years, maybe a little more now, seven, eight years. And um, with, with deep learning and machine learning, computers are opening their eyes. So typically when a computer shows you something, it knows nothing about that thing. Like this image here, the computer has no clue what's going on other than there's some green here, some red here, and, and, it, and it just puts that uh, 2D grid of colors on the screen for you to see. No idea that there's some kind of sphere there, these weird tentacle-like -like, tentacle things, no concept of that whatsoever. But that is now changing very, very quickly and very, very dramatically over the past seven, uh, eight years. So a very quick overview of my talk is a quick introduction to neural networks. Neural networks are the thing that make it possible for computers to understand what they're looking at. When they, take, when they show you a picture, they understand that it's a cat or that it's a, um, it's a person. Or that furthermore, not only is it a person, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, maybe the past, one of the past four US presidents. Not only is it one of the past four U.S. presidents, turns out this past four, one of this this person is currently of uh, this age, just by looking at the face. And then furthermore, what are they feeling from their face? We're we're rapidly uh, uh, passing these milestones that eight years ago were inconceivable. Like to have a computer tell you how old you are from your face was nonsense eight years ago, and now it's very much in the realm of possibility. And and it's sort of like the computers are turning back and looking at all of the media that we're generating, all this visual media that, uh, that, 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 that Jerry was, was t saying. Uh, computers are sort of turning back and looking at that stuff now and learning from it, which is kind of funny. Um, so then after that, I'm going to go into a live demo, a very quick one, uh, of how we can make computer vision simple. So I'll have a computer look at me and see what it thinks. Um, what does machine learning look like? This is a very high level typical overview of a machine learning system. Uh, there's a lot of data, in this case a lot of video. There's some learning algorithm that trains a model. This model can be all kinds of things. Neural networks are a particular kind of machine learning model that have been very successful. Once the, once the model is trained, we then have to replicate it. We replicate it across thousands of machines. They serve the model. The model then looks at new data that it hasn't seen before and says what it thinks about it. So in this case, these models, you might have a, a model that can detect uh, an, the age of a person or a model that can detect the gender of a person or a model that can detect who they are. And then that model is replicated, is served. And in general, when you're building a machine learning pipeline, you will repeat this process over and over and over again until you get a model that works well. And usually the first time you try it, doesn't work so well. Now, the machine learning has been around for decades, uh, four or five decades. But uh, why has a neural, why, why weren't we better at computer vision then in that time period? It's because we didn't have a, a very good model that could really look at visual data and understand what's going on. So we're going to look at what kinds of models make computer vision possible, in particular neural networks. So if we expand this up for a, a little bit, I'm actually going to take a stab at explaining neural networks to you. Um, <laughs> this is a basic neural network. Uh, what it's doing is, is it's consuming this image and trying to figure out which one of dog, cat, boat, or board it is. So let's live in a simplified world. There's only four things in this world. And uh, we want to detect which of the four things we're looking at. The way a neural network learns this is by going through these steps where every, every dotted line is the input to the, to the next layer. So what's happening here is we're going to take a little patch of uh, a little patch that's filled with numbers. In here, there are, imagine there are numbers. These numbers are going to get multiplied by the color values of the image. The multiplications get added up, and they become the input to the next layer. The numbers inside the matrix, we don't know. We don't know what they should be. So, but we set them to some random values initially, and then we learn uh, what they should be set to by looking at data. So these numbers, we don't know them. We multiply them in, feed them to the next layer. And then we do the same thing to the next layer. We take the patch, we slide it across the image, doing that multiplication and addition summation. And we keep on doing this until at the very end, uh, we are just left with four numbers. And whichever of these, whichever of these numbers is the highest, we say we're seeing a puppy, or we're seeing, we're seeing a dog, or whatever the highest number is. We don't know how to set these numbers. We set these numbers by looking at data. There's an algorithm that will try and, in, in, in data, we have the, the, the picture, and we also have the, um, uh, the correct label. And then all of those numbers that we don't know how to set, 
we try and look at millions and millions of examples and set these numbers such that that data is fitted. So much like a least squares model will try to fit uh, data that you give it so it will minimize the error squared. This thing will also try to set these numbers so that it minimizes something like an error squared, right? And that's a, that's a neural network. And that's how we get computers to see things. This works phenomenally well. You can take this up to like tens of thousands of classes. You know, you could say there's tens of thousands of classes in the world. For a person's age, say, you know, a person's age really varies between zero and 100. So there's 100 things that it needs to detect. Uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, other classes, are, there's few of them. So we can realistically take this thing and, and actually train it on uh, a variety of, of applications. And one of those applications is looking at media. So let, now that I have an automated pair of eyes, perhaps I would like to, say, monitor all of the media coming out of an entire country, like Russia, for the president of the current United States. Right? So if I wanted to, say, look for Putin or Trump showing up in all of the TV channels in the United States, or, um, or, or, or Russia, I cannot do that. So take those models. I'm, this is now Matrix. What we do is we let you create those models by clicking and dragging without programming, accessible to anyone, and I'll actually show that in a second. And we then create a model, and then that model can monitor video streams and other kinds of visual media. So here I have Bloomberg, uh, the, the TV channel, being monitored by three detectors. A detector is one of those trained models. Uh, we're not going to train it he here, I'm just going to use it here. These detectors are populating a calendar of events. So this, this calendar isn't like your normal calendar where you schedule the events. The computer says, oh look, I found such and such at this time. So this is a detector that's looking at the past four US presidents. Um, this one looks for uh, gender, and I apologize if we, we were kind of making gender binary. That's not my intention, it's a simplification. And um, the, uh, here we're looking at airplanes, birds, bikes, boats. So we look for, for those in Bloomberg, and lo and behold, we found a person on Bloomberg and a car behind him. Um, and so this is happening uh, right now, and I'll show a live version of this in a second. And then we have the past four US presidents. Of course, the current president shows up most often on Bloomberg, but you'll see the others. And, um, and, and then a gender detector. You see, there's may, way more... Uh, detections for that because there are a lot more people on Bloomberg than there are objects and these other weird things. So this is, this is the kind of thing that you could get to by just clicking and dragging now without having to actually do any programming. This is why simple uh, is in the title. Um, so Matron is essentially a studio for letting you do that. How do you create a detector? Like we had it created for the, for the, United, for the US presidents. How do we do that? We have to create detectors. Detectors are like first class citizens of Matron where if you have a uh, like PowerPoint makes presentations, Word makes documents, Matron makes detectors. So here we have a, uh, we're building a detector for Steve Jobs. Say. What we do is we take some MP4 or some, some, some video of Steve, and then we can flick through the frames of the video inside uh, Matron and, and pick out some frames that are good examples of him. So this one, this one, and this one. And then upload those frames. And then the, the, we will train a model using the process that I just mentioned to you on those frames to look for his face. And then we will have a detector that we can either look for a space or for some other thing, and then we'll be able to use that thing. So here, we'll be able to see how, how well the model is working by running it on some YouTube videos or something like this. So without further ado, let's actually go do that live. It's much more fun when you see it live than sort of canned in some, um, uh, in some presentation. And then I'll go into some use cases. So this is the TV archive, and, and they use this to actually monitor um, uh, monitor. Uh, TV channels in the U.S. for the for the occurrences of those folks, um, and you can see that this is this is uh, this is on our blog. Uh, the TV archive does a phenomenal job of archiving TV, and they use Metro for that, and we're and we're very happy to work with them. So this is this is sort of what it looks like when you uh, when you log in, and um, we can try using some of these detectors, or we can make our own. So we can browse public detectors, or we can make our own. So let's uh, browse these public detectors, and this is one of my favorite detectors. Uh, this one can detect a few things like airplanes, birds, and people. Um, so if I run this thing live on um, uh, on me, even though I'm sort of see, half half occluded there, uh, it should have no trouble to say that there's a person there, and it's sort of put the bounding box around me. And then let's say I have a um, uh, this here, and then now I have a bottle in my hand. 
and, and there's, a, there's, there's a person there. Maybe if I have a sort of chair uh, behind me, it might pick up the chair. We'll see. Yeah, so there's a chair. Um, does the audience mind if I take a pic? I guess I, I should probably share this. Sometimes people, people don't like it when you take pictures of it, so I, I won't do that. Um, so the, the basic idea is that this thing is now seeing right, what it's looking at. And, and I can take this and run it live on a, on a video stream, like let's say um, uh, C-SPAN, right? There's always people on C-SPAN, so we can use it to, uh, to detect people on C-SPAN. We don't show C-SPAN live because that's a copyright issue. We show it frame by frame and without sound. Um, so the, here what we have is C-SPAN current, like this is happening right now, uh, the State Department confirmations of somebody, I guess. And then there's a person being detected uh, right there uh, live. So, so now that I'm happy like, with this, I could say, well, look, I want to detect uh, people or whatever on, on uh, C-SPAN. I would hit monitor, and I would say I want to look for uh, uh, people showing up with some confidence, like 70% confidence, and then I hit I want to start now and finish never. And then, and then I, off to the races, I see this, um, this sort of if, if, um, uh, this sort of calendar that I showed you earlier, but this one is going to be running live. This one's running live on Bloomberg, and so we'll get to see what was detected in the past hour or so on Bloomberg. So here I have, um, so in the, past, uh, in the past hour, while we started from 7 to, uh, to 8, we had these detections happening. So there was a boat. Aha! So this, this, this surfboat is being mistaken for a boat. So these mistakes happen, right? And this happened at 7.13, so half an hour ago, just, just a little bit over half an hour ago. And then at um, 7.18, uh, which is 20 minutes ago, we had a car show up. Uh, and then another car showed up at 7.24, and then a few more cars showed up at 7.34, which was just nine minutes ago, right? So, um, and then the presidents, they, they, they of course show up quite often. These are the past four US presidents. At 2 p.m., uh, we had the current president, and at 2.28 p.m., we had the previous president. You don't see Barack show up on these, on, on Bloomberg so much anymore, sadly. Um, and, and of course, uh, the current president shows up uh, much more often, right? Um, so let's see, how much time do I have? I have enough time to actually make a detector. So let's make a detector for someone new. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a detector for myself. And uh, Jerry, who's your favorite celebrity? She has it. Yeah. Beyonce. Beyonce. All right. <laughs> so we're gonna make a detector for Beyonce. So we hit. Um, what we hit. We write that down. We said we want to create a face recognizer. Uh, we want to use matrix stock images because Beyonce is famous. And we say this is uh, the laser detector. And then we hit finish. And it'll be, uh, uh, we'll land in, in studio mode where we have to give examples of, of Beyonce, which we already have. There are many examples of her right there. And then, uh, and then myself. And there's a bunch of examples of me because I've done this before for myself, right? Um, so the, these examples are just coming from a typical web search. They're not going to be gold standard things. It's not something that the computer picked out. These are coming from the web where there was some metadata surrounding it saying, this is Beyonce. So we, this data could be noisy and has to be cleaned up, but thankfully it looks like we don't need to clean it up. So we'll just hit train detector, and then while it's training, we'll go look for some Beyonce video to run it on. Uh, Beyonce YouTube interview, say. Like if we find a YouTube video of her, we can then run the detector on it, and that should hopefully uh, work out. In the meantime, um, let me tell you, uh, I guess we can look at this the blog post for uh, the, the TV archive. So they have this, this uh, data set now released. They, they, they combed all of the US TV channels uh, uh, using Matroid to, to, to look, for the, uh, look for the US presidents, no, sorry, not the US presidents, the current um, political climate. So they, they look for the following people. And uh, there's some interesting things like, uh, surprisingly, Hillary and Barack are sort of still very prominent on Fox News. Uh, and then he shows more Hillary Clinton FaceTime than any other top-rated Fox News show. Ryan FaceTime spikes on news show, show they air during morning hours. These are little tidbits of information. BBC News just doesn't care about the US that much, you know. <laughs> These sorts of things are, are kind of fun to see. Um, 
And let's go back to our detector. So it's now ready. It trained in that time. So that training happened while we were sort of uh, looking for things. And then we're going to dump in that YouTube video that I went and found uh, and, to, and sort of see what it thinks here. Uh, so what's going to happen is we, we start streaming live from YouTube. This is a YouTube video, so it's, it's less, uh, uh, less copyright sensitive. We do care about copyright even when it's YouTube, but we, this, this video isn't copyrighted. Um, at least, not that it's tagged that way. Um, and so we look for uh, Beyonce in this, and so uh, there she is, right? So this, this overlay is, is being overlaid onto, on top of um, Beyonce, and she's, she's being tracked as she's sort of giving the talk there. We're kind of missing it here. We're missing her here. Um, and you can see the timeline being annotated for when she shows up, right? The video hasn't actually finished uh, completely going through yet, but there's some yellow dots here. This yellow dot indicates that we have detected uh, Beyonce, <laughs> she's sort of being followed in, in the frame. Um, and she's gone for a second. I guess this angle we didn't get, so we didn't quite have that many examples of her from that angle, so we're going to do all that. Um, and of course, I can run this on myself, and it should say uh, that this is, this is me. Right, and I'm definitely not Beyonce, right? So very, <laughs> very little chance of Beyonce, very high chance of me being there as well. Um, so the, the basic idea is that we would like to put computer vision into the hands of people who are not AI researchers, people who have uh, lots of media to, to, to look at. Like we partner with the studios. Uh, like I had a call with Fox Studios this morning. They have decades of archived video that they need to sift through. Like we're looking for Thor's, uh, actually that wasn't Fox. But we're, we're with another studio, we're looking for Thor's hammer. Like they, they just want to, they want to they look at all the video in the past while to look for Thor's hammer, because, well, they care about that for some reason that I don't know. Um, <laughs> sadly, there's some uninteresting things, like ad targeting, like the, uh, companies will care about putting uh, ads about their car in, TV, in, in movies that had their car in it. So, like, if, I, if they paid to have that Aston Martin show up in some movie, they would like to have the Aston Martin ad show up right after that movie. Which is, uh, you know, we have to keep the lights on, but that, uh, that, that, that's how that happens. Um, so this is just the beginning. We're only a year old, and this is coming straight out of research, um, out of the University of Toronto. Not not that much here, but then there's a huge active presence of, of decoding happening now in in, in uh, Stanford as well. Um, yeah. So that's that's what I got for you. So so the uh, the basic premise is that as computers open their eyes, we will uh, have them sort of see more and more stuff. Um, I only showed you some, some basic things, but as e every day there's a new paper coming out, new things being detected. Um, you know, really nice things like you, you can check if someone has uh, fallen on the ground like an, uh, uh, as a, as a, and, and have, have an alarm go off to, 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 to tell you, well, look, this person is unconscious and on the ground, you might want to come after them. Uh, oh, and, and then there's all these other things like, um, like what we saw with, with journalism. And then there are some weird actors who will try and use this for, for, uh, for other purposes that, that are not so fun. Um, but but uh, we try and focus on the, on, the, on the applications that are a little more uh, ethical. Um, the, not a little more ethical, just what we think uh, should be done as opposed to what some bad actors might want to do. And a lot of these, are, there are a lot of unanswered questions as to what should be done with an automated pair of eyes that aren't really answered. And I, and I spend a lot of time thinking about them. And I, largely don't know the answer to a lot of them and um, talk to people who are not technical about them quite often to see uh, where we are sort of pushing ahead in tech that, may, that, that has these sharp edges that you want to make sure that we protect against and we don't let people uh, use it in ways that are sinister. Um, that's it. Thank you for your time.